by Diane Blackman Bailey. The History of Queen Califia and the California Blacks by Diane Blackman Bailey. April 19, 2015. Ancient American Empire of Eleven, Queen of Diamonds and Gold, Califia and the California Blacks. Queen Califia Cave Art. Whoever controls the images, control your self esteem, self respect, and self development, whoever controls your history controls your vision. Dr. Leonard Jeffries. Asterisk in the continental United States of America, there were Africans who came before slavery, before Columbus, and thousands of years before Jesus Christ. In many cases, these blacks and other indigenous nations established thriving civilizations in ancient America. Queen Califia and the California blacks were one such ancient black nation. Reigning over the Empire of Eleven, in the ancient kingdom of Utla, the nation of Atlan, was the great queen of gold and diamonds, ruler of the California blacks. Queen Califia, decorated warrior general, mother, was the grand and beautiful royal leader in the beloved, wealthy, and powerful, land of the blacks. A civilization with an abundance of natural resources, gold, diamonds, vast quantities of precious stones and metals, with territory spanning thousands and thousands of miles throughout California. From the coast of San Francisco to Bahia, Mexico, as far inland as Colorado, Utah, and all the Pacific Ocean Island nations including Hawaii, and Australia. Places where most of the original inhabitants were Aborigine, black and brown people of color. Queen Califia was a powerful general queen, a strategic opponent, who commanded and maintained a fleet of ships while ushering in a time of peace in all surrounding lands. The robust California blacks were master trainers and lovers of exotic animals with developed skills. They were able to teach themselves to defend, utilizing a real force of domesticated and trained griffins and eagles, snakes, tigers and bears. Along with other species native to California and Africa, these unusual creatures were trained to protect the land and its people. So loved, respected and powerful was the queen, she could project her imperial will over the seas of the Mediterranean. A master of communication and commerce, trading gold tip spears, gold, diamonds, precious stones, furs, food, plants, rare birds, and animals as well as maintaining cultural and trading contacts with Africa, Australia and the Pacific Islands. This great lady ruler also successfully defended her empire during wars in the Mediterranean Sea and Anatolia, as well as against the Byzantine Empire and in southern Europe. Queen Califia and the mighty empire of the California Blacks, a people whose civilization and history has been lost to time and space through a deliberate destructive conspiracy of lies, secrets and deaths perpetrated by evil invaders of ancient America. To say they came before Columbus is an understatement. They came thousands and thousands of years before. Many historians, including the renowned expert and father of ancient Africa studies, Dr. Van Sertima, author of the best-selling book, They Came Before Columbus, David Imhotep Ph.D., The First Americans Were Black, and Chi Canta Diop, The African Origin of Civilization, Myth or Reality, among many, all concur and prove that the first Africans started arriving in ancient times, between 56,000 to 100,000 years ago. It is now also an archaeological fact that the true original people of the Americas included many nations and the black Californians were one of them as descendants of the Olmecs, West Africa Mandaeing, Egyptians, Kings of Kush, and the first emperor of China, Shandiz, Shang Dynasty. Other ancient civilizations occupying California in the distant past include members of Black Mojave and Washita Mound Builders as well as the following. Ancient indigenous black nations of America California Blacks Olmex Washita Mound Builders Louisiana Midwest Yamasee Southeast Iroquois Cherokee Blackfoot Pequot and Mohegans Connecticut Darianite Panama. History of the California Blacks 
The mighty California blacks were a powerful military-savvy civilization, with shipbuilders, priest scientists, traders, and empire builders. These elite seafarers traveled all over the globe trading in gold-tip spears and precious stones. Masters of commerce, this highly sophisticated society practiced, as part of their religious ceremonies, astronomy, tracking celestial serious star systems, scared science, geometry, and mathematics. They were nautical wizards of longitude, latitude, master builders of complex housing, political systems, and captains of the open seas as well as arts and music enthusiasts. They were also worshippers of the Egyptian gods Horus, Osiris, Isis, Wajit, Sun God, Ra, and the universality of the concept of Mat, and how ethical behavior was the norm. The goddess Mat represents truth, justice, righteousness, and world order, the supreme ethical paradigm that dictated the behavior of the California blacks and the civilizations of ancient America. The California Blacks, Eleven Empire was ruled by a succession of queens, as was the custom in many ancient African nations. This unfamiliar practice observed by the naive Spaniards is surely how the myth of the nymph, Amazon queen legend, who hated and killed all baby boys and men, came into existence. Their matriarch societies were based on maternal values, decedents and relationships were determined through the female line a practice that was very common in West Africa and throughout the ancient world. Read related story, History of the California Blacks Nation Caliphians, Caliphians, the first Americans. Ancient America Sacred Cave Art, Yellow Diamond Harvest. This remarkable multicultural, highly spiritual religious civilization thrived for thousands of years and is duly noted in several recent discoveries including ancient cave art dating back tens of thousands of years. Over 100,000 cave and rock art pictures, symbols, and ancient artifacts can be found at Crystal Lake, California, now a restricted United States Army base, and thousands of newly discovered cave and rock art found in 2014 in the highlands of Mexico. The photos of recently discovered cave art show one thing for sure. They were not a hunter-gatherer tribe, but a complex highly advanced thriving civilization that prospered way before the arrival of any Europeans, Indians, or Clovis people. Through our high-tech in-house CGI experiment, conducted recently on ancient cave art, we were able to back-engineer some of the ancient art. What we discovered was truly amazing. CGI graphic art techniques were used thousands of years ago. Some art appears to be created using computer-generated technology and 21st-century animation. What is revealed is intriguing and very surprising, a unique first-hand glimpse at life in ancient America. Some have low pixelation. However, all are in beautiful color, depicting cave art pictures of worship, sacred ancient and Egyptian symbols, including the cross, snakes, gods, marriage ceremonies, underwater fishing, cave diving, scuba mask, electricity, guns, gold mining, and other high-tech capabilities. The California blacks lived by a strict moral ethics code, living in harmony with the people, animals, land, sea, earth, sun, and heavenly planets. Their wood-built homes, official dwellings, and structures were arranged in granger and complicity, from holy sites, cliffs residence, monumental buildings, scared caves and mounds that were enhanced and decorated magnetically in silk, gold, diamonds, and precious stones. Some appear to have illumination, electricity. Queen Caliphia and the California Blacks were all directly or indirectly related to our descendants of the Olmecs of South America, West African Nile Valley, Kings of Kush, Emperor Mises the Great and the Yellow Emperor, Shandi of China. The Black Mound Builders of the Washita, Mers, Wakita Moors, Nation, an independent civilization, are also descendants of the Almecs who successfully lived alongside of their cousins, California Blacks, in peace, while engaging in boat building, seafaring, trade and commerce for thousands of years. Descendants of Ham The history of the original black people of California is not mentioned in most American history books. The term Indian is used to classify all of the people found in the Americas when Columbus arrived. Yet, Columbus and his men, 
as well as people like Balboa and Peter Mater, do mention Ethiopians in the Caribbean's, Darien region of Panama, the coast of South America, California, and other areas. According to these invaders, these black indigenous people were the descendants of Ham, a Bible reference. It was specifically those with black skin and kinky curly hair that the Spaniards and other Europeans were instructed to capture, kill and or enslave rather than Christianize them, based on the edict of the mid-1400s. A History of the African Almecs, published by 1st Book Library. The black Californians were not American Indians but indigenous people of African ancestry. As a mixed culture, they closely resembled today's African Americans and Melanesians from the Pacific Islands. The history of the black Californians appear to be conveniently erased, ignored, shrouded in mystery, myth and ignorance, all in an effort to keep our history obscure by not mentioning that the original people of California and America were black and American Indians whose civilizations existed together peacefully thousands of years before Columbus. Yet the black Californians are not unknown to the Spanish invaders and colonialists whose defendants are part of the population of Mexico, California, and the southwestern United States and who are no different from the settlers and colonialists from Spain, England, France, Portugal, and elsewhere. In fact, the Spaniards who mention the legend of Queen Califia, who ruled a land at the edge of the world, where the women were warriors and decked in gold, was in fact a black California, Olmec queen. Descendants of great kings of Kush and queens of West Africa, Olmecs, Nubia, Egypt, and China. The California Blacks, Kingdom of Utila, Atlan, California, numbered over 10 million, with the population exceeding 25 million, including Pacific Islands nations, Hawaii, and South America. The Spanish explorers along the California coast were among the first to see and inquire about the black Californians. Upon arriving along the California shores, they saw a number of black people with ships. They asked the Indians who they were and the Indians replied that these black curly-haired people were of the land of California and traded with people across the sea, the Pacific Ocean, by sailing back and forth. Where were these black Californians going in the Pacific? They were trading with island nations, people in Hawaii and throughout the South Pacific where the black population has always been very large and widespread. In fact, when Magellan arrived in the Philippines, there were large numbers of Negritos who were well organized and had a strong population. Black traders and black Africoid who had been in the Americas for thousands of years were also spread in the Mississippi Valley, eastern United States, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Among the groups were the Washita the Yamasee, Guali, Califunami, Chuaras of Brazil, Afrodariente of Panama, Choco of Colombia, Olmec, Mend, Sha of Mexico, West African, Egyptian, Black Chinese, and Guanini of South America, among others. Raffinesque mentions a number of black groups in his work, The Primitive Black Nations of America. Friends of the Society of Philadelphia, 1833, One Thing is for Certain. The Europeans, Americans, and Spaniards never mistook American Indians for black Americans. They always referred to blacks, Negro African types, as Moors blacks, Ethiopians, and the people of the Queen of Sheba. Olmec Kavot King of the California Blacks Ancient America Sacred Kavot, Modern World Meets Ancient Hunters what happened to the California blacks and the original blacks of California and the Southwest? The extermination of the blacks of California was indeed the largest act of genocide in American history. The idea, strange as it may appear, never occurred to them, the Indians, that they were suffering for the great cause of civilization, which, in the natural course of things, must exterminate Indians. Special Agent J. Ross Brown, Indian Affairs California was one of the last areas of the New World to be colonized. It wasn't until 1769 that the first mission, Mission San Diego de Alcala in California, the first of 21 missions, would become the primary means for the Spaniards to subjugate the ingenious. The leader of this effort was Junipero Serra. Disputing what history books currently tell you, the missions were coercive religious, forced labor camps. 
through bribes, military, and even onslaught European diseases, that usually targeted children, the colonizers ensured that eventually sick and desperate natives would come to the mission for help. The people taken there had their children taken from them and harsh, manual labor was the rule. Beatings and filthy living conditions were common. The death rate at the mission was appalling. By 1818 the percentage of natives who died in the missions reached 86%. Over 81,000 converts eventually managed to successfully flee the missions. Soon after, there were Indian revolts. The San Diego mission was burnt down in 1775 during the Kume Rebellion. Mojave Indians destroyed two missions in a dramatic revolt in 1781. Santa Barbara and Santa Inez missions were destroyed in 1824. In 1834, Mexican governor Jose Figueroa freed the Indians from the mission system and stripped the friars of their power. More than 100,000 native people had died because of the mission system. But that did not mean things went back to how it was before. The Spanish didn't give the land back. Instead, the land was distributed to political insiders and a system of ranches developed. By the start of the Mexican-American War, 26 million acres were controlled by just 813 ranchers. Gold rush and genocide after Johann Sutter became a Mexican citizen in 1840, he was awarded a land grant of 48,827 acres by the government. On June 18, 1841, he and his partner James Marshall began Sutter's mill shortly after. While building the sawmill, Marshall discovered gold the morning of January 24, 1848. History in the state of California would forever change for the original natives of the land. Ironically the gold rush that followed didn't enrich the man and they too were forced off the land by whites more ruthless than them. In the chaos of the gold rush, almost all of the enslaved indigenous people and Indians were killed. Many others escaped. In 1840, there were 5 million California blacks and only about 4,000 Europeans in California. Only 400 of them were Americans. Now a horde of 100,000 adventurers, gold seekers, and murderous criminals descended on California. The authorities were completely overwhelmed. The natives faced catastrophe of biblical proportions. Numerous vigilante-type paramilitary troops were established whose principal occupation seems to have been to kill blacks Indians, and kidnap their children. Groups such as the Humboldt Home Guard, the Eel River Minutemen and the Placer Blades, among others, terrorized local natives. The local authorities not only ignored the genocide in their midst, they encouraged it. Rewards ranged from $5 for every severed head in Shasta City in 1855 to 25 cents for a scalp in Honey Lake in 1863. One resident of Shasta City wrote about how he remembers seeing men bring mules to town, each laden with eight to ten native heads. Other laws called for collective punishment for the whole village for crimes committed up to the destruction of the entire village and all of its inhabitants. These policies led to the extinction of as many as 150 native nations. Mighty Black Californians' last stand The Empire of the California Blacks became a victim of Spanish colonialism, European expansion, the slave trade and gold rush. Many communities, men, women and children were killed, enslaved and worked on ranches in California. Others were shipped to Europe and down south as part of the slave market. Other California blacks courageously continued fighting and defending their ancestral land until the mid to late 1870s. The California gold rush would strike the fatal blow and the impending destruction of the California's first civilization, Utla, at, Lan, Land of the Blacks. Like the California mongoloid Indian races who were hunted down and killed in California at $50 a head, the same genocidal practice was carried out against black aboriginals in Australia who were made to reject their native culture and accept European ways. The black Californians suffered a similar fate. During the 1800s, after many years of war with Spanish invaders of the Southwest, with Mexico and the United States, the empire of the California blacks was completely diminished. 
the survivors blended into the African-American black population of California and the United States. Their descendants still exist among millions of black Californians today. One such family is the Blackmans of California. One book shows a picture of black Californians being marched into slavery by Spanish Californians on horseback. There is no doubt that since California was basically like the rest of the United States and partially segregated up until 1965, the black Californians who were found in the state when the Spanish arrived and continued to survive did not disappear. As the pictures above show, these blacks were similar in features to black Africans. Therefore, it would be easy for them to have become a part of the black population of California at a time when the black population was as high as 40% of the area. Hence, the black aboriginal population of California today is the decedents, including the decedents of Africans from Mexico, freed slaves, and free blacks from the eastern and southern United States. Black Caleonia Sacred Cave Art, Cross of Egypt Ancient America Sacred Art, Atland King of Glod and Diamonds In retrospect, it is important that blacks in California understand our true history and realize that California was named after a real black queen, a descendant of one of the first black civilizations of the Americas, the Olmec, and that the original inhabitants of California, the people who have any claim and rights to any land, are the American Indians and black Californians who are in fact part of the black population of California today. The problem with the condition of blacks in California today is the lack of knowledge of ownership and the lack of knowledge of history. Blacks in California see their economic, political and numerical power and influence as a shrinking minority in California, a state that has a significant black population for hundreds and thousands of years. Propositions that seek to hide the racial and ethnic origin of people continue the same genocidal policy carried out against the American Indians and black Californians. The shrinking numbers of blacks in California, from 40% before the 1800s to 7% today, has to do with the deliberate policies of genocide being implemented against blacks by political trickery and policies. In fact, propositions that aim to not classify race and ethnicity in California were just as evil as the hygiene program taken in Europe during World War II to determine who is Aryan and who was not. This time, the aim is to anglicize the population, yet maintain a strata caste system where blacks after losing their identity and culture, will be nothing but inferior copies of Anglo-Saxons. The Anglo-Saxons will continue to dominate and maintain their culture, but blacks will simply be copying them while being kept down without a culture, without an identity and, in many ways, without the essence and soul of what makes a people unique. Facts, artifacts, pyramids, ancient bones, stone statues, Cave art, calendars and archaeological discoveries within the last decade have all concluded that there was indeed a black warrior nation in California and they were at war with the Spanish, Mexican Spaniards, and U.S. settlers until the mid-1800s. According to the Black Book, Random House, 1974, the settlers and their armies were relieved when the black Californians were pacified. The time has come for today's black Californians to know their history and understand who was always in this state and who came during the period of colonialism. The idea that a person from another land whose ancestors commit genocide against American Indians and black Californians has more right to any part of California is utterly absurd. There is no difference between a Spanish invader and settler and a French or Dutch one. They are still settlers and they cannot claim what is not theirs. Perhaps that is why the history of the black Californians has been obscured and perhaps that is why the genocide policies against black Californians has led to a decrease in the population and here are the reasons it should never be left out of history. Ormic, Cali Black Sacred Tablet Cave Art in Color Earthy Paradise, Island of California Now I tell you about the strangest thing ever found anywhere in written text or in human memory. I tell you that on the right side of the Indies there was an island called California, which was very close to the region of the earthly paradise. This island is inhabited by black women, and there are no males among at all, for their lifestyles were similar to that of the Amazons. The island was made up of the wildest cliffs and the sharpest precipices found anywhere in the world. 
These women had energetic bodies and courageous, ardent hearts, and they were very strong. Their armor was made entirely of gold which was the only metal found on the island as were the trappings on the fierce beast that they rode once they were tamed. They lived in very well-designed caves. They had many ships they used to sail forth on their trade expeditions. Garcia Rodriguez de Montalco, Las Sergas de Esplandian 15th century explorer, tells the story of a people who reign, grew, and prospered in a land for thousands of years. Whose population at its heights is said to be well over 35 million, that were very wealthy, religious, and spiritual, worshipping the earth, stars, sun, moon and planets. Adventurous people, highly educated, family-oriented, lovers of the entire universe, plants, animals, and the weak. These multicultural descendants of the Almecs, West Africans, Egyptians, and Black Chinese, bloodline and ancestry date back and encompass the greatest ancient civilization that has ever existed on the planet. The West Africa's Mali Empire, City of Gold, the 19th to 25th Egyptian dynasty of the kings of Kush, remises the great and the first empire of China's Shang dynasty, also known in pop culture as the Yellow Emperor. The discovery of an unknown people, omitted and lost to history, who have been relegated to myth, fairytale or alien encounter all over the world. An advanced civilization that is responsible for the most monumental feats ever achieved. With advanced technology, mathematics, geometry, astronomy and sacred science, stone and mound building skills, that has never been duplicated or explained. They say history is recorded by the winners. However in this instance, that is a rule that needs to be challenged. Ancient American history started thousands of years before Columbus and the many people who populated the land and past existence is everywhere in pyramids, stone heads, bones, tools, maps, calendars, mummies, cave art and many more artifact examples, however all seems to go unnoticed or written off as origin unknown. This lost civilization was a global people and the original ancient Americans were descendants of the Olmecs, whose bloodline flows through West Africa, Egypt and China. The founding fathers and mothers of the great kingdom of Utla, America, the empire, of Atlan, on the island of California. Asterisk the original name Utila, a Kushite word meaning to vacate. When northern and southern Utla united as one nation, Southern and Northern California, the plural name was used. The word for Utla became Atlan. Two feathers adorned the California Black's headdress, confirming the union of North and South America as was the custom when Upper and Lower Ancient Egypt allied. Asterisk This educational presentation was produced to dispel the European myths, deceptions, collusion, and intentional cover-ups of one of the greatest civilizations that ever lived. A forgotten chapter in ancient American history whose time has come. Queen Caliphia and the California Blacks False Euro Myths Not Indians No culture of civilization Headhunters Cannibals did not practice human sacrifice Naked savages only a women civilization Amazon women killer of boy children hated men killed and captured all men raided other civilizations Nymphs did not practice human sacrifice We're not hunter gathers. Catholic Church Genocide the doctrine of discovery and U.S. expansion. No person shall be, deprived of life, liberty, or property, without due process of law. This idea, which is a bedrock of American democracy, is from the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which was completed in 1787. The same year the U.S. government enacted the Northwest Ordinance, which created the first organized territory out of the region that is today Ohio. Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Among the other regulations, the ordinance set forth a guiding principle for the treatment of Native Americans and their lands, the utmost good faith shall always be observed towards the Indians, their lands and property shall never be taken without their consent, and, in their property rights and liberty shall never be invaded or disrupted. Just seven years later, in 1794, the U.S. government sent a regiment led by General Mad Anthony Wayne to conquer a confederation of American Indian tribes attempting to keep their lands. At the Battle of the Fallen Timbers, 
a band of 800-plus Native Americans were slaughtered and 5,000 acres of crops were destroyed. The tribes in the region were forced to sign a treaty that limited them to the northern region of what is today's Ohio. In 1802 President Thomas Jefferson signed the Georgia Compact, which stated that in exchange for land, what is today's Alabama and Mississippi, the federal government would remove all American Indians within the territory of Georgia as soon as it could be done reasonably and peacefully. By 1830, the government passed the Indian Removal Act, which authorized the president to remove the remaining eastern Indians to lands west of the Mississippi. Between 1838 and 1839, under President Andrew Jackson, 15,000 Cherokee Indian nations were forcefully taken from their land, herded into makeshift forts, and made to march, some in chains for thousands of miles to present day Oklahoma. Over 4,000 Cherokees died from hunger, disease, and execution on what they called Nunadald Sunni or the Trail of Tears. By the late 1840s, almost all Native Americans had been removed and moved to lands west of the Mississippi. Although the Black Californian warriors continued fighting well into the late 1890s. Christian Empire in 1095, at the beginning of the Crusades, Pope Urban II issued an edict the papal bull Terra Nullius, meaning empty land. It gave the kings and princes of Europe the right to discover or claim land in non-Christian areas. The policy was extended in 1492 when Pope Nicholas V issued the bull Romanus Pontifex, declaring war against all non-Christians throughout the world and authorizing the conquest of their nations and territories. These edicts treated non-Christians as uncivilized and subhuman, and therefore without rights to any land or nation. Christians claimed a God-given right to take control of all lands and used the idea to justify war, colonization, and even slavery. By the time Christopher Columbus set sail in 1492, this doctrine of discovery was a well-established idea in the Christian world. When he reached the Americas, Columbus performed ceremonies to take possession of all lands discovered, meaning all territory not occupied by Christians. Upon his return to Europe in 1493, Pope Alexander VI issued the Bull Intercetera, granting Spain the right to conquer the lands that Columbus had already discovered and all lands that he might come upon in the future. The decree also expressed the Pope's wish to convert the natives of these lands to Catholicism in order to strengthen the Christian Empire. In 1573 Pope Paul II issued the papal bull Sublimis Deus, which denounced the idea that Native Americans should be treated like irrational animals and used exclusively for our profit and service, and Pope Urban VIII, 1623-1644 formally excommunicated anyone still holding Indian slaves. By this time however, the doctrine of discovery was deeply rooted and led nonetheless to the conquering of non-Christian lands and people in every corner of the earth. Although the United States was founded on freedom from such tyranny, the idea of white people and Christians having certain divine rights was nevertheless ingrained in this young nation's policies. The slave trade and centuries of violence against black people depended upon the idea that non-whites were less human. The theft of indigenous people's lands require the same justification. In 1823, the doctrine of discovery was written into U.S. law as a way to deny rights to Native Americans. In 1845, a Democratic leader and prominent editor named John L. Sullivan gave the doctrine of discovery a uniquely American flavor when he coined the term, Manifest Destiny to Defend United States Expansion and Claims of New Territory. The right of our manifest destiny to overspread and to possess the whole continent which Providence has given us for the development of the great experiment of liberty, is right such as that of the tree to the space of air and earth suitable for the full expansion of its principle and destiny of growth. The idea of manifest destiny was published in newspapers and debated by politicians. It furthered the scenes among US citizens of an inevitable or natural right to expand the notion and to spread freedom and democracy, although only deemed capable of self-government, which certainly did not include blacks or other native people. Whether called the doctrine of discovery or manifest destiny the principles that stimulated U.S. thirst for land that have been disastrous for natives, indigenous blacks, and many others both in North America and abroad who lost life, liberty, 
and property as a result of United States expansion. The history of Christian law helps us understand how our leaders, many considered heroes and role models today, undertook monstrous acts in the name of liberty. Ormic Egyptian goddess Isis cave art. California blacks cave art, Ormic heads. Although hundreds of thousands of ancient rock art and cave drawing exists in Crystal Lake, California, dating back 50,000 years or more, a protected military base, all up and down the California coast in Mexico, Utah, New Mexico, and Colorado, among many other sites, official authorities continue to have no idea who created them. Although many discoveries over the last decade has indisputable proof and evidence of a great civilization of blacks living in America for thousands of years. The famous Olmec heads in Mexico, countless art, sculptures, figurines and archaeological discoveries. The fact that the academic community and mainstream media continue to ignore this head in the sand approach to discovery is suspect. They refuse to acknowledge or disclose the true creators of the indigenous, the great black civilization that founded America and accomplished these great feats. One technological breakthrough I accomplished by using a Mac computer in an effort to study and find the royal color of purple color palettes, symbols, pics and other related cave rock art with similarities in order to identify the origins of vast amounts of ancient art in so many places. So we back engineering some of the photographic cave art. While the assumption is they were scientifically advanced, their technology could possibly be compatible to our tech in the 21st century. And indeed it was. They were not only tech-savvy but also 3D, CGI, computer-generated illustration-savvy. The cave art remarkably demonstrates animation and reappearing art. To my discovery, ancient images did appear showing lifestyle, religious ceremonies, the gods, worship, activities, work, family and the wealth and opulence of the ancient blacks of America. You will surely be as amazed as I was to see what the cave and rock art revealed. Although the amazing digital graph photos, DPIs are low, the color graphics are clear enough to see the life and times of the ancients and one thing is for sure. They were not hunter, gathers. The history of Queen Califia and the California Blacks, researched and written by Diane Blackman Bailey, dblackmanceo at gmail.com.